As you've probably guessed, I was headed on a kayaking adventure today and the plan was to access the hill via the kayak by going across the, the loch. And I was headed for the Loch Lomond and Trossachs National Park. And I tell you what, it was a cold one. When I set off in the car about 7, it was registering about minus 6 on the, uh, on the thermometer and it was cold. But anyway, I soon headed up the side of Loch Lomond and I was arriving in Tarbot where I was to meet up with Jerry. Oh. Oh. oh, it's cold. It's about uh, quarter to nine and uh, as you can probably see behind me it's a beautiful sunrise. Today I've got my kayak, you've probably seen it, you might be able to see it in the back there on the top of my car and the forecast really good, it's, there's no snow in the hills but it's to be really settled, uh, no wind, lovely sunshine so what we thought, I've not been out in the kayak for a long time so we've decided to take the kayaks out on the loch and I'm going to paddle across to a hill and access it via the water and on the kayaks do something different and head up there so I'm really looking forward to today and it started off beautifully look at that sunrise behind me absolutely beautiful fantastic so enough talking I need to it takes me a while to get the kayak off the roof and set up and get my my gear on for the kayaking and all the gear in for the hill walk or what have you so I'm going to wait to, wait to do that now right let's do it <laughs> So after a lot of faffing about what with getting the kayak off the roof and transporting it down to the shore and then getting all the hill walking gear sorted and loaded into the kayak and then getting our own kayaking gear on we were eventually ready to set, set off onto the loch and I tell you what, it was absolutely gorgeous there was little pockets of steam and mist just rising up from the loch and the skies were pink behind us I couldn't have asked for a better start to the day The water was calm and had that black inkiness about it with a lovely reflection coming off it as we set off from Tarbot. And Loch Lomond is a big area of water, in fact it's got the largest surface area of water in the UK, it's about 71 kilometres squared and the length of the loch, the loch in total is about 36-37 kilometres. The loch crosses the Highland Boundary Fault from the, which separates the lowlands from the highlands and we were probably just into the highland region by this point where the loch narrows and it's quite fjord like here you know that's caused by the glaciers a few thousand years ago carving the sides of the mountains away it's so cold hot aches in the fingers soon I can't feel my can't feel my right hand <laughs> oh that's so Need some mitts. What was that? Time it is. Oh, not bad. Quarter two. Yeah, so it's taken us about 45 minutes to paddle across to. Inversnaid on the other side of the loch and we found a nice wee bay and decided to come ashore there and start to get ready for the hill. Boats ashore and it was now time to start faffing about. We had to make the transition from kayakers to hikers and get changed out of all that kayak gear and get all the hill walking gear on. More faffing.
Well, it's 10 o'clock now. It's about an hour since we left Tarbert, which is way down there, maybe four or five kilometres down the lock. I mean, we made good progress. It's quite uh, quite nice conditions, wasn't it, Jerry? Lovely. Yeah, and, uh, it's lovely. If you're watching this, don't steal those boats. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, don't, please. We put a padlock on them. We're buying a new electrocution fence to go around it next time, aren't we? So, anyway, we're just uh, we're just about 100 metres south of the old hotel of Inversnade, and from there we're going to follow follow the road up, and there's a wee mountain to the north. Uh, it's a Corbett Benacoin, is it? I Benicoin, think it's called. Benacoin. Yeah. Benacoin. We're heading up. So we've now got uh, feeling back in our fingers. Yeah. Oh, it was cold coming oh. across there. I couldn't feel my fingers, and when the feeling did come back, it was rather sore, the old hot aches. So, anyway, we'll get the rucksacks on, and we'll get uh, we'll get hiking. Let's get going. Isn't there snade? So we were soon on our way past the Inversnade Hotel. I think it dates back to about the 18th century at some point. Anyway, up we went and we were headed for the garrison where the walk starts proper up the hill. Whoa. Well, it's been tough going, isn't it, Jerry? We came along, we followed a 4x4 track which then turned into a ATV track which took us across this area of level, very boggy land and we're in the middle of doing a forest regeneration project here so there's a lot of young saplings and big holes where they dug the peat out for the young saplings and I think it's to go from here to uh, Calendar as it's said down there so uh, anyway, so we're heading up here, here's the hill behind us, probably doesn't look too far behind us but it's, a lot of uneven terrain, and you can see where we've come from. Away down across the loch, where it goes into Tarbert. And you'll not make it out of the camera, but the garrison is where we came off the main road from Inversnade. We got out of the kayaks, went up by Inversnade, followed the tar road up to uh, the garrison, and then across the 4x4 four four and then up the hill. I think that's quite an old settlement, the garrison. I think Jerry was saying it was something to do with the Redcoats, was it? Yeah, pacify the Highlanders. Pacify the likes of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it's obviously an old, an old building there. Anyway, we've got a small matter of a deer fence to try and cross and then up to the uh, up to the summit. Across this rough ground. Woohoo! The going was tough. There was pathless terrain and boggy and tussocky and really energy sapping stuff. But as we got higher, the views opened up down Loch Lomond and Loch Long behind us that kept us going and we made our way up and towards the summit of Benacoin. <laughs> well here we are on the summit of Benacoin here and uh, somebody was up here already, we met him like a, a hello Nick. <laughs> nice to meet you on the top of the hill, he watches some of the videos, so it was, it was nice, to, nice to meet you up here. But it's, it's cold today, it's... Um, it's not as forecast, the forecast was for blazing sunshine and uh, blue skies, but this band of clouds moved in from the west and it's just, yeah, it's making it a bit raw. However, the cloud is still above the summits and we're getting some lovely views down uh, Loch Lomond and down Loch Long, past Tarbot and Crook Tarbot down there, absolutely lovely. And up here you can see around to Ben Louis and Ben Duran, Central Highlands and the Creed Laracles. You can even see down at the campsites today, it's quite nice. Absolutely lovely, but uh, yeah, it's not warm, so uh, I think we're going to uh, we'll linger up here for a bit longer and we'll get cracked back down because we've still got to paddle a good five or six kilometres back over to uh, to Tarbot. Uh, hopefully this wind will be at our back and uh, it'll maybe help push us along the loch. But anyway, a few more photographs right to here and then we'll get, uh, we'll get off the hill. <laughs> then a coin translates to Hill of the Dog, which is quite appropriate given the uh, the noise you'll hear in just the <laughs> next section or piece to camera. Anyway, with the cold wind blowing on the summit, we didn't hang around on the top for very long and we were soon headed down off the mountain and back towards that ATV track which took us back to the garrison and the usual start of the walk if you were bringing a car with you. So here we are at uh, just at the back of the garrison. 
There's a wee car park here. You see where Jerry's looking as well. But this is called Great Trossachs Forest. And to be honest, I actually haven't heard of that. And there's a trail which goes from Inversnade where we parked the kayaks through up here over to Loch Catron and down all the way to through the Trossachs to Calendar. I think it's about 30 miles. Is it 30 miles? Is it there, Jerry? Uh, 30 miles, yeah. Miles. Down the bottom, 30 mile trail. So it's. Yeah, so pretty, pretty rough ground when we came off. We, we came off that trail and then went up the, the, the hill and it was a bit uh, stuff going, wasn't it? Yeah, it was pathless, uh, rough pathless terrain. Boggy, yeah. frozen, yeah. partly frozen. I think the fact it was frozen helped. I think, yeah. I think in the summer it would be bracken and you know, burn. Yeah, right. Yeah, good though. We better go because um, you'll not probably not be able to hear much of this because of that bloody dog barking in the, yeah. <laughs> in the background. Must hear us. Anyway, let's go. Let's head back down to the kayaks. <laughs> So down past the old garrison, which was built in 1719, and it was uh, it was used as a base to try and quell the Jacobite uprising. And uh, history or legend says that the McGregors actually set fire to it and burnt it down whilst it was being built. And then another legend says it was destroyed in the 1745 uprising before being rebuilt. Anyway, we were soon passing the Inverstead Hotel, and we eventually got back to the kayaks that were still there and hadn't been stolen. Well, here we are, we're back down at the kayaks and the uh, the going looks good, it's nice flat cam out there. So paddle, what, about four, five, six kilometres? I don't know how long it is, but... Uh, under 5k. Yeah, under 5k back to tar, but nice flat cam lock, so it could be a, could be a nice paddle. Let's go and uh, paddle home. Again, more faffing about as we transitioned from hill walkers to kayakers. But we were soon loading the boats up and getting them into the water and set for a fine paddle back across the loch to where we'd started at Tarbot. The conditions were absolutely perfect and the water was even calmer than, it want, than what it was on the way out. It remained that inky black way. It was just like a black mirror, to be honest with you, with the reflections of the sky. Absolutely fabulous. Perfect paddling conditions and a great conclusion to the day. All too soon we were back passing Tarbot Isle and soon approaching Tarbot. All that remained now was more faffing as we got the kayaks out of the water, got changed, got the kayaks onto the roof of the cars. But despite all the faffing, it really is a great adventure using the kayaks. For us it's something slightly different, we don't do it all the time and it's nice to have the, the option to, to have a bit of a varied adventure when heading to the hills. It certainly adds a bit more spice to the normal hill day. And our hill day was now over. And all that was required now was the long drive back home.